Hello and welcome to Ule Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Sagittarius. If Sagittarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. Okay, and let's see, what do we have here today? What do these tea leaves want to tell us? I feel that you have clicked on this video for a reason. There is a message here that needs to get through to you. So as we watch, or as you watch this and as we go through this reading, I want you to, um, you know, just take what resonates with you. Uh, maybe store away some of the other. Not every little detail has to uh, fit perfectly right now, but these are things to think about. Okay, so our card for this reading, and I always pick one card, choose it um, at random, of course, uh, and this is to kind of just add another dimension to the reading. And so this card is the Queen of Cups. And uh, this is one of my most beloved energies, uh, emotional. Um, there's a sense of oh, just being fully in your own uh, existence, fully um, empowered, uh, really very, what's the word? I, I always want to say it's bravery, but it's not just bravery. There is a knowing, a, um, a connection, something within you that you are an explorer of the universe. Uh, and the universe includes yourself right? The interior worlds. And so uh, with this Queen of Cups, there is something so magical, so sacred. Uh, you could think of um, who would you go to for any kind of insight, any kind of advice, right? Somebody you know who understands the ebb and flow of things. Somebody who um, feels like they've lived a million lives, right? And uh, this is the energy of the Queen of Cups. And so here, let's look at this, this image first. And this is somebody kind of walking into... And it looks like the crescent moon, but it also looks like a ship, okay? <clears throat> and it looks to me like they are uh, kind of boarding onto this vessel, okay? So to me, I look at this and it reminds me of the night crossing. If you can think of uh, a lake, right? Late at night, it's pretty still. Uh, the water is... is uh, you know, just very smooth and glassy um, as the boat kind of pushes its way through. There are small ripples. Um, but when you look down into the water, there are a million stars reflected from above. There's no way to really know the difference. What is above? What is below? And so the night crossing um, is, is a time in life where, uh, you know, things feel, um, very interconnected. Um, sometimes we can almost feel that we've lost our direction because, um, everything seems so infinitely spread out, right? And no matter which way you go, you are kind of in the vastness of it all. Um, you know, this can feel overwhelming. This can also be an opportunity to kind of go fishing, right? For the insights of uh, 
uh, those magical lands that we have within, uh, the unconscious mind. Okay. And if you think of that lake as kind of a primordial ocean, where all of the abstracts, the symbols, the sacred geometry, um, the archetypes, the beginnings of, uh, you know, the constructs of um, allegory, um, you know, the motifs and, and um, the sacred uh, circumstances of life that kind of echo through all things. This is a place where we go and we find that stuff, right? So I feel you are really in a place where um, you are intentionally out there. You're intentionally um, maybe meditating, doing uh, active imagination, some kind of, um, oh, what is the, what what can we think of this as a uh, kind of a archaeological trip into your own psyche okay and um i think that you're definitely in a creative mode but even more than that i think that you are um nurturing your emotional state uh and i think that this is because you are a being of probably um a lot of emotional maturity okay you have not shied away from the difficult things you are fully comfortable uh going deep in there and um for one reason or another that has come up in your life if you have gone through some of those um you know difficult tower moments in life loss um you know the things kind of falling apart separations um you know, just circumstances that have led to uh, maybe some, you know, feeling uh, disenfranchised, alienated, um, you know, alone. But you've had to kind of navigate your way through them. And you have done that by a lot of self-work. And also just kind of... Uh, you know, staying the course, pushing on. And um, so now we are in this place where uh, you feel quite creative. Um, and I think that you are, you are really, um, you know, I think of, uh, we talk a lot here about shadow work, the act of imagination. Um, but also, you know, I think something that is really important to to focus on it as well is experience getting out in the world living right having um moments of um sensation uh you know gathering impressions um being in different varied situations meeting different kinds of people, different kinds of things. All of this is so important to uh, growing our larger understanding of life, but also um, activating those parts of ourself in that, in that ocean we are talking about, in that lake, that night lake, um, where we go fishing for, uh, you know, our inspiration. Um, it's important to experience things in our waking life because that activates those things in our unconscious, okay? And so I also see as we turn this around, we have kind of a, it looks like a person walking into um, maybe like a cave or some kind of uh, covered area we have maybe another person here walking another person here and so i feel we really do have this this movement into the cave is often uh synonymous with the mother archetype uh the anima archetype and these are kind of the feminine principles um at least you know, two of the many. And 
this is a place, this is also a place of safety. Okay. So if you can think of creating a place to explore, uh, your mind to, um, let those things come out of you. So if you are maybe an artist who likes to go and be away, so nobody is watching you so that you may explore your emotions so that you, you know, can, um, dance and laugh and cry and writhe and, you know, um, all the many, um, physical, uh, kinds of expressions of feeling, um, you know, sometimes it is a benefit to go away into our little caves, our little safe place, um, the little temple that we create, uh, kind of that, um, you know, symbolic universal womb. And, uh, you know, I, I do, I feel like we have a movement towards something like this. It makes sense to me, especially in the Northern Hemisphere, we are going into the winter and the cave is very much part of that going into a slumber, an incubation, a time to dream, to dream, to dream. And, uh, have you ever slept so well as to be held by somebody you feel protected by, right? Your mother, um, or at least, you know, the archetype of the mother, the caretaker, to be watched over, to know that you can fully um, go into that slumber without having to worry about what will happen, right? And so this kind of is um, the same energy, Okay, and so uh, I am interested to see or hear about what kinds of things you're working on. What, um, what are your mediums? Uh, you know, maybe you are not unlike myself. I am um, first and foremost, what I guess you would <laughs> call a homemaker or a stay-at-home mother. Um, and I am somebody that likes to cook a lot and, um, you know, do little crafts around the house and things like this. And so often these are my mediums and I look forward to kind of expressing myself through my culinary rustic creations. Um, so we mustn't just think of, uh, our creative, um, outlets as, you know, painting and writing and, and, um, you know, music making or whatever. It could be anything where you are, um, expressing parts of yourself, putting yourself into something. So if you'd like to share, please do, uh, put that in the comments. Okay. So... I'm also seeing a person with a wheelbarrow here. And um, of course, we know this has to do usually with some kind of construction or outside chores. Um, usually not in the home so much. Hopefully we don't have wheelbarrows in the home. Although sometimes my laundry, I feel like we do need <laughs> one of those around to get it from one place to another. Uh, but I do, I feel like there is a sense of, uh, you know, really building a place for yourself to be. And this kind of really makes sense with that cave, that nest, creating a space where you feel comfortable expressing yourself. And if this is uh, you know, a room where you like to craft or a studio, or maybe it is a desk that you put together and it, you know, has a, like a kind of certain feeling to it. Uh, you know, I, I myself, um, often enjoy putting together a little space, getting everything together. And then, um, that's really where that's how I've created, right? I've put together the whole thing. I've gotten all the tools. And then I usually uh, don't always go through with actually doing the creative work. 
Um, so I've learned about myself over the years that maybe I am just somebody that likes to decorate <laughs> or likes to um, build spaces for creating. Um, but you know, whatever it is, uh, I feel like in a lot of my readings, I've been having this energy really come up is the sense of nesting, um, getting things kind of oriented in a way that feels cozy. And so I can really kind of see you uh, doing that. And this is definitely in an emotional space, okay? I also see it going into the metaphysical. So I feel like this will also be a place that feels quite spiritual for you. A place that, um, you know, has a, a calming, grounding quality to it as well, okay? And now we also have uh, the anchor okay um this is kind of it reminds me of some kind of old tattoo or something but we have an anchor there and um i feel like seeing this it really feels like you um are just so much getting into this place where uh you want to stop being so um oh what is the word kind of pulled one way or the other busy doing, you know, this and that, running around, running around, and hopefully finding a time in your life for this next cycle, this next season, where you can kind of anchor yourself a bit. Uh, maybe get on a schedule that um, has, you know, your, you going out and doing less. Maybe figuring out a way to um, get your errands all kind of bunched together um, on one day or, you know, whatever. It, I understand. I have a million things to do as well, and it is hard. Sometimes I feel like I spend half my life scheduling, <laughs> and that in itself could be its own job. Um, so I think this really is just a sense of wanting to slow down. Okay, and be at home in that place that feels nice and safe there. Um, a place that, and not just safe, I mean, although safety is paramount, uh, but cozy. Um, re a place where you can rest. A place where you can kind of let your hair down, as they like to say. Um, and, let's see, where are we? I'm trying to decipher this one over here and it really it looks like a lion to me um, we have like a little lion who is running and so I also think you know there is just and I'm just trying to think here there's just really a sense of uh it's not aggressive necessarily, although it could border on aggressive, but I think it's very much like a protective stance. And ultimately, I feel like they're just, not only is there the sense of wanting to kind of be closer to home, um, kind of limiting uh, people from being in your private life, but also turning towards really nurturing your relationships that are really important to you. <coughs> Excuse me. And I feel like um, this is maybe like one or two really important relationships. Uh, if those are children or a partner, a good friend, family member. Um, I really feel like you just you're just kind of in a place of minimizing um, the stimuli, emotional stimuli, social stimuli. And you really are focused on um, putting all of yourself into these relationships. And um, I think with that lion energy, it really is. It's just that very protective, like wildly um, loving and passionate and um you know like well the like a mother lion right and um 
And I can see this being a time that you really feel just an abundance of, uh, I'm trying, it's not, I don't want to say it's like positive emotions, but really, um, it's just such a holistic feeling. Okay. Like a really, um, realized feeling an empowered posture. Okay. And, um, this is, this is going to be, I think a really beautiful season for you. Uh, now, I want to look over here and I have to say, um, as I was looking at this first, we have a little, um, dragonfly. Okay. And the dragonfly is definitely the bringer of, uh, powerful dreams, the pow powerful, um, perspectives, the ability to really look over some of the things going, <clears throat> excuse me, going on in your life. Um, using a space like your dream world to explore these things that are happening um, in a way that is not so limited, okay? Because in our dreams, we get to wake up from them, right? Um, we perceive them to not have a lot of um, lasting, uh, you know, things. Oh, I just spilled that all over. <laughs> not a lot, a lot of lasting, um, effects on our life. Okay. And maybe that's true. Maybe it's not, I don't know. But the point is the dream world can definitely be a laboratory for really examining things that are troubled for us. And it doesn't have to be passively, you know, often we kind of just let ourselves dream. And it's like, if we dream about something that is hard or something that, you know, we're really interested in great, you know, this is a place to work some of that stuff out. Uh, but we can be active participants in our own dreams. We can go into them with intention. Okay. And basically, um, and this is something that you have to work on over time, but basically my, um, you know, advice to anybody is when you are getting ready for bed and you go through your, um, you know, your nightly tasks, start to begin to think about the scenarios, not in a way where you're kind of like obsessing over, oh, why did so-and-so say this at work or, you know, oh, they never do enough or, you know, you, we kind of, we can, I, I definitely go over those kinds of things in my head. I get, I hurt my own feelings. I get my own self upset and all of that. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I'm talking about is going through a situation as if you were living it. Okay. Um, making the decisions in your mind. Now thinking about going into this as you are going to sleep as well, continuing going over it over and over and over again. And as you go into your sleep, right. Deciding this is where I'm going to go. I'm going to go look at the situation. I'm going to go and examine this. Now, this is kind of like guided meditation, kind of like active imagination. But if we are doing it right as we are passing over into sleep, um, oftentimes some, at least some of um, the fragments of this situation, the scenario will carry over. Okay. And this is something we have to practice. Um, but you can get good at it and you definitely can. Uh, and I think that this is definitely, um, a beautiful time. It does not have to be negative stuff. These can be, I, I want to go and visit my grandmother who I haven't seen and, or, you know, been with. She's transitioned. Um, so I haven't seen her in 20 years and, um, this will be a space for me to do that. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, things like this or, um, reliving memories of, you know, loving moments of bliss of whatever great enlightenment, uh, you know, whatever it is that you want to use it for, it's definitely available to you. Okay. Um, and the other thing I want to see, I want to talk about here is we have a little heart, but also, um, I'm seeing little plants here and, uh, I want to say that when we are working on nurturing, 
uh, relationships in our life. Um, when we are getting into a place where we want to take care of something, um, including relationships, I think it's always a good idea to take in something like a new house plant, um, maybe a succulent, right? Um, also thank you to my niece who gave this to us. Uh, it's very beautiful. And, um, but yes, taking on some kind of uh, living thing, a, a plant of some kind, something that's low maintenance if you are not um, somebody who uh, likes to or has a, a deep relationship with growing things or keeping them alive. But, um, you know, this it's always a... a um, it's a beautiful expression and ritual to take care of a living thing, okay? And doing that with a plant alongside nurturing a relationship uh, can be a, a really interesting and wonderful combination, okay? So something to think about. Something to think about. All right, let's see. What are we going to do? The Dreamers Deck, 40 Affirmations for Pursuing Your Dreams. And this is from the I Know Collection. I'm just going to stop where it feels right. And we'll go ahead and look at this card. It says, I know that my finances will be taken care of even when I don't see how. I am secure. Yeah, this is one for all of us, right? It's hard. <laughs> Brings up a little anxiety in me just thinking about it. Um, but yeah, this is something something I myself have really had to learn to do is trust the universe. The universe shall provide. Okay? Um, and it will. And it will. One way or another, um, it will provide. Okay, Sagittarius, I want to go ahead and say thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. If you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps us get into the algorithm and that helps us grow the channel. If you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing so. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next videos are coming out. And uh, if you want to leave a comment, please do. I read all of them. They mean so much much to me. Okay, so uh, I love you Sagittarius. I hope that you have a wonderful uh, week ahead and we will talk in just a few days.